cancer is a multifactorial disease, which means there are several factors over the years that have caused the cancer to grow in someone's body. Hence, it needs a multifactorial approach in order to heal it or prevent it the same way. There cannot just be one magic pill, one magic oil, or one kind of conventional treatment that will work alone for that cancer to heal. <clears throat> You're going to have to do many, many, many things, little things, to heal a cancer if your intention is to heal. Of course, when it comes to cancers, we need to change our mindset because what's happening today is cancer comes with that whole death sentence kind of you know mindset we have that mindset that oh this disease is going to kill me this disease is going to consume is going to consume me what we need to understand that for the longest time for the longest time mindsets have controlled human beings I'm not over here to tell you that you should give up your conventional treatment, give up your chemo, give up your radiation, only take nutrition, only make lifestyle changes, none of that. I'm here to say, imagine, imagine that if you made your conventional treatment work with nature. When I say that, I mean if you change the way you eat, sleep, think, and move, there is a possibility that you are going to get better. Because when we look at the statistics today of only conventional treatments, I'm not saying conventional treatment's bad. I'm not saying it's wrong for you. Conventional treatment have kept many, many people in remission and put them in remission and given them their lives back. What I'm talking about is the fact that we all ignore. Today, we take all of these medications, we do all of these things expecting it to fix us. And it fixes us for a while, but because we never get to the root cause of why, why in the first place has my body allowed a cancer to grow? When we start addressing the root cause and then we take the conventional treatment or we do nutrition or we make lifestyle changes, we do yoga, pranayama, all of that stuff. It makes more sense when you're possibly aware of the root cause of the cancer in your body. Well, today we're going to talk about nutrition and the importance of nutrition when it comes to the healing of your cancer, irrespective of what treatment you're doing. In fact, people who go through chemo and radiation and all the conventional treatments the efficacy of the treatment can actually increase when the patient starts making changes in their nutrition. We're going to understand exactly how that happens. Number one, we need to believe in energy. Everything on this planet is energy. You are energy. Your cells are energy. You hold up a pen, there's energy in the pen. You can generate energy between your hands by just rubbing your palms against each other. That is energy. There's energy everywhere in the food that we eat, in the drugs that we take. It is energy. Every one of those trillion cells in the human body require energy to either heal you or to even destroy you. You can have the right energy or you can have the wrong energy. Now, how do you get the right energy to trillions of cells in the human body to support the disease that you're going through? <clears throat> it either comes in from the food that you're eating, the quality of the food, the quantity of the food, the state of mind that you're in when you eat your food. Because we all know that the, you, could eat, you could be eating the best quality food, but if you're stressed out, if you're angry, if, you know, if your mind is constantly in turmoil while you're eating the food, the energy of the food breakdown happens and your body completely changes. Your absorption becomes less. Your digest, di digestion gets less. Your assimilation gets less. So there are several little things that you can do to improve this energy in your cells. Every cell, every cell requires the right energy to boost your immunity. Every cell requires the right energy to fight, to fight the bad cells, to clean your body out of toxins. Your liver, your heart, your kidney, your brain all requires energy. And when we're constantly putting poison into our body, be it chemo, be it radiation, be it surgery, without making any other change on the side, what we're doing is we're creating the wrong energy in the human body. So you see, that's why people going through chemo have this side effect of fatigue, of constant fatigue, drop in energy, reduction in weight, all of these things. I'm not saying chemo is wrong. All I'm trying to show you is how it upsets the energy of your body. The same energy, if channeled the right way, can be used to heal you. So when it comes to nutrition, <clears throat> there's a saying today that people, most doctors tell patients, eat what you want. You have to put on weight. What we need to understand today is you lose weight when you have cancer. It is the side effect of the disease. And when you go through chemo, every side effect of every chemo is weight loss. You can ask your oncologist about this. It's written. One of the side effects of chemotherapy is weight loss. I understand it is important for you to maintain your weight so that you don't get weaker and weaker. But when you're told to eat everything to put on that weight, 
that is your death sentence. That is the beginning of your disease spreading because you're either feeding your cancer or you're starving your cancer. Let's go back to nature again. We can go back to school where we all did the experiment of a candle. You take a candle which, and the flame is lit and you put a glass over the candle. So basically you starve the fire of oxygen and the fire dies. The same thing, today we can use chemo to poison the body, create, create free radicals in its honest attempt to kill the cancer, which is good for you. We can use radiation, which is also effective in burning off cancer cells, or we can use surgery to cut off a part of the body which has cancer cells. And sometimes the cancers come back, sometimes they don't. But what if, what if we can starve the cancer cells? There is an energy that is allowing the cancer cells to grow. What if we could starve the cancer cells from that energy? Then we have the fourth way of also making this cancer better in our system by starving it. And that's where nutrition comes in. We are either feeding disease or we are starving disease with the choices of nutrition that we put in our body, be it cancer or be it any disease. So if we can make sure that your cells are getting the right nutrition and we're depriving your cancer cells of the energy that is allowing it to grow, again, we have the chance of success. This is not about saying nutrition is better than chemo, chemo is worse than nutrition, chemo is better than nutrition. We're talking integrative. What is the best for your body, for your disease? It is not about what is right or what is wrong. It is about what is effective and what is best for your body and your disease. So continue with the conventional treatment that you may be on. But how can we use nature and lifestyle to basically starve the body and boost immunity? The only thing... The only thing in the human body that can prevent and heal is your immunity. So we all understand when it comes down to nutrition, we're feeding those cells. How can I generate energy in trillions of your cells to heal you and protect you? How can you do it? How can you generate that energy? That energy comes from food, from vitamins, from nutrients, from movement. A little bit of exercise gets your blood circulating. You generate something called piezoelectricity, electricity in your cells. Yes, you have electricity in your cells. That is energy that can boost ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is energy that allows your cells to increase their fighting ability against any pathogen, virus, or cancer. That is your immunity. You have your leukocytes, your neutrophils, your lymphocytes. All of these cells require energy to fight, constant energy to fight. So as you can see, when you're going through your chemo, these levels fall. The body is fatigued. These levels keep falling all the time and you need to give your body the right energy so that your lymphocytes and all these white blood cells can recruit that energy to fight. That's how it is. You need to get the vision in your human body. Are you giving it the right energy to fight? So this is not about popping supplements. We all know that during chemo and radiation, you do not want to do supplements which are rich in antioxidants because antioxidants will actually reduce the efficacy of your chemo and radiation. There's a time to do it. There's a time to add the right quality supplements, the right quality food into your diet. So when it comes to food, we're not getting into the debate about does cancer, you know, do cancer cells feed on sugar? We're not going through any of that. All I'm asking you to do is use common sense. We all know the dangers of white sugar in the human body when it comes to immunity, when it comes to allowing mucus to breed, when it comes to allowing bacteria and pathogens to thrive. What we're trying to do is change the environment of the human body. It's like a fishbowl. You have a fishbowl and if your fish keep dying in that fishbowl or falling sick, we keep taking out the dead fish and putting new fish in. The solution is cleaning the water in the fishbowl. The same analogy to the human body. We can keep poisoning, cutting, burning, pushing artificial hormones in the human body. But if we don't change the terrain, the soil of the human body that is allowing the disease to breed and thrive, this process is going to be endless. And usually, you know, it ends in death or it, it ends in organ failure, you know, or some more problems caused by the side effects of the heavy drugs that we take. We can take that, but we've got to change the terrain and soil of the human body. And you can do that by detoxifying with normal, simple foods, feeding the cells the right amount of food, making sure that you have the right amount of movement to increase the amount of blood circulation because blood carries nutrients from the food that you eat and oxygen from the air that we breathe to trillions of cells. That oxygen that you breathe is energy again. You can get energy in your cells from the food that you eat the kind of water that you drink, 
the amount of sleep that you get because when you sleep, all those trillion cells get energized again. The kind of emotional thoughts that you have, we all know that negative thoughts are draining in the human body. That's why when you're constantly emotional and negatively emotionally charged, you feel tired, you feel drained because that is all pulling energy from the body. The same energy that can be used for healing you. And then there is energy in prayers. There is energy in faith. There is energy in belief. So just imagine what I'm trying to tell you right now is imagine if you put all these things together in your healing process. You make your chances of survival and healing so much more stronger than just depending on one factor alone, be it chemo, radiation, surgery, or just nutrition as well. It's got to be integrative. The human body is built up of so much, and we need to slowly give the body everything it needs so that it can heal you. So when it comes to nutrition, we need to understand that it is very important that you eat the right way. Again, doctors tell people, eat whatever you want. Eat ice creams. Put on weight. Let me give you a simple example of what I did. So I made a diet of 2,000 calories made out of seeds and nuts and grains and lentils and all the healthy foods, 2,000 calories. And I also made a diet of 2,000 calories with ice cream and french fries and biscuits and milk and chips and all of that stuff. Two similar diets which will give you the same amount of energy in the human body. Now let me tell you, the energy, 2,000 calories of the good food is going to feed trillions of cells what it needs. The 2,000 cal calories of ice creams and chips and eat whatever you want. Most of these are empty calories which is doing nothing. They're not giving you nutrition. They're not giving your cells anything it needs to fight. In fact, it is draining you of energy because the more empty calories that you put into your body, your body utilizes tremendous energy to break it down. The same energy that your immunity can use to heal you. Which is why whenever you have a junk meal or you eat too much, why do you feel sleepy in the next 30 minutes? Because your body is using considerable amount of energy. Considerable amount of energy to break down all the crap food. The energy that your body now needs to heal you. All of the blood moving away from your system is diverted towards your digestive system to break down the crap meal that you ate. All that energy and all that blood should be flowing to trillions of cells. Trying to boost your immunity, kill cancer cells, heal you, repair you. So you see, it is so important the kind of food that you put into your system when you have cancer. It is so important. And I can tell you one thing. Eat a 2,000 calorie diet of ice cream and all of these things for a week. You will not put on weight. You will put on ugly fat. Your body doesn't need ugly fat. Your body needs energy, which may not come in the form of weight right now, but which should come into healing energy into your cells to heal you. So please understand that you must, you must eat the right food when you are sick and even when you're not sick because that food creates the very same energy that I'm talking about. Again, when it comes to protein, most doctors will say eat more and more protein. Let's go back to a normal, healthy person in a gym. Today, you know, most people working out in gyms consume in copious amounts of protein. They eat so much of protein, but yet you'll see yet no one is putting on that kind of muscle weight. Everyone's eating more and more protein and yet they're fat and they're flabby. Because it's not about how much protein you eat. It's about how, how your body breaks down protein into amino acids. And amino acids does the magic in your body when it comes to repairing your cells, the building block of all cells, your immunity. So when your doctor's telling you, go on a high protein diet, you need to understand that protein, he is right. You need protein, but it needs to be spaced out over the days, over the, over the, over the hours. If you eat too much of protein at one time, remember, protein is also feeding tumors. Protein is also feeding cancer cells and your body utilizes a lot of energy to break down protein. So you want to have protein, but in very small quantities spread over the day so that you eat a little bit of protein. Your body produces the right amount of enzymes to break it down using minimum energy. Your absorption is more important than the quantity that you eat. So it is so important for you to understand that do not throw yourself into a high protein diet. Yes, you need the right amount of protein, but it has to be had the right way spaced over the entire day or you are actually creating a decrease of energy in the body and more digestive issues. There is no point in having digestive issues with cancer because your eliminatory organs have to work constantly to flush out toxins created in your system through the conventional medication that you're going through. So there's no point. That's why you see people going through 
diarrhea and constipation when they're going through chemo. Some go through diarrhea, some go through chemo. We need to understand that chemo is wiping out every class A protein, vitamin and mineral in the human body, right from your vitamins to your selenium, to your zinc, to your magnesium, to your D3, to your B vitamins. And that's why you have side effects because you have a deficiency of vitamins. So all we're trying to do is tell you have a good nutrition plan where you get these vitamins and minerals back into your body so that you don't have a disease and a deficiency. Every deficiency causes more problems in the human body. So now you may want to get all of these vitamins and minerals back through your normal food. In some cases, people will need supplements at the right time because the body is so depleted of vitamins and minerals that you may need good quality supplements to get into your system. That's for you to decide. If you're having a proper natural diet, you may not even need supplements. So that's the importance of nutrition when it comes to your disease. The first mindset today that I want people to make is understand that, hey, I need to make changes in the way that I eat if I want to come out of this successful. Because I can promise you one thing, when all the chemo and radiation has broken down your tumors and all your cancer cells and you're shown a PET scan, you still have to take care of yourself. The reason why you're asked to come back and do a treatment or a, a, a PET scan in the next three or six months is because they know that there is a chance that the cancer may have been missed and it may grow again. So great, we're hoping that in that first PET scan, you're cancer free, but you gotta still have faith in your immunity and constantly feed your immunity the right amount of energy through the nutrition that you eat so that your, your immunity is also working for you and sub suppressing and putting your cancer in nutrition. So when it comes to nutrition, it really, besides sugar and milk, I would advise people to get off sugar and get off milk. Why milk again? Because 92% of the samples of milk have estrogen and antibiotics, which is feeding most cancer cells. So if you have access to really, really good, trustworthy organic milk, there is no problem in consuming it. Secondly, milk is extremely mucus forming. Mucus forming environments is exactly what cancer cells need to thrive. An acidic body is exactly what cancer cells need to thrive. They thrive on in an acidic body which has a lack of oxygen, which is why it is so important for you to limit acid foods and to make sure that your body is not highly acidic when you have cancer. And milk creates an environment of mucus. So besides sugar and milk, these two things have to be the minimum. If you can cut it off for a while, great, it's gonna help you heal. If you have a little bit here and there, it's not going to kill you. It's not going to be the reason that your cancer comes back. But you want to make sure that you keep it to a minimum. Because remember, we're trying to change the environment of your body. We're trying to starve your cancer cells. And then, right from the quality of salt to the quality of oil, to the quality of your cooking utensils, to the quality and the way that you store your foods, all of these minor details have to go into when you're preparing your body to fight your cancer using immunity and all the other conventional treatments that you are on to that level of detail. Yes, you can have your grains, you can have your vegetables, you can have your fruits. All of these things are fine. Vegetarian, non-vegetarian really doesn't matter depending on your genetics. For someone in the, white who's in, in the West who's grown up eating meat, they probably have to change the quality and move on to more organic meat, okay? But their genes recognize, recognize meat as fuel. For a vegetarian, it is important that they stay vegetarian. If you're trying to, try, if you're trying to move from non-vegetarian to vegetarian, transition the right way. Do not suddenly change overnight. You will have deficiencies and problems. It's great. Vegetarian diets are very, very healing for cancers and cardiovascular problems. But transition. So if you're a non-vegetarian, try to come down to once a week and then maybe once in two weeks and then slowly move completely to vegetarian. But I'll tell you right now, I see no difference in data of vegetarians healing faster than non-vegetarians or non-vegetarians having more cancer than vegetarians. We cannot compare that. It is different for everyone. It is a multifactorial disease. Sometimes nutrition plays a very small role and the mind plays a larger role. The stronger your mind, the better it is for your body. You can use your mind as a drug to heal you as well. So over the next couple of, of cancer care spaces that we do, we're going to get a little more into nutrition. Today, the idea is your mindset is accept that nutrition is going to be a very, very important drug in your healing, no matter what anyone tells you. The food that you ate grew you, grew your brain, grew your musculoskeletal system, your liver, your hands, your legs, your heart. Food grew you. That is energy to your cells. It is in your genes. The very same food done the right way can also heal you. So remember, nutrition is not a replacement for your medicines and drugs and conventional. It is a very important part. Work in an integrative manner. Imagine, imagine if you put all these things together. You have hope 
And then we have miracles, we have energies around us. We do not have to give up. We never have to lose faith in the intelligence of the human body. And look around you, I tell people every single day, look around and look at the little miracles that happen in your life. That same little miracle could play an important role in your healing. So no one is God to tell you how long you have left to live, whether it's two weeks, a month or three months. No one has got to tell you that a fourth stage cancer is your end of life. Fourth stage and medical protocol is that they just don't have any more treatments to treat you. That is why it is the end of life disease because apparently there are no more medicines to treat you. But we have your body. We have the intelligence of your system. We have food. We have movement. We have plants. We have energy in the mind. We have prayer. We have belief. We have faith. We have so many more magical drugs. Imagine if we can start utilizing them together. Imagine if what we could create and that's what we got to be aiming for because for the longest time we believe in quick fixes and one method of treatment and the statistics are showing us today that that is not the right way anymore. The right way is take that and take everything else on the side. That's up to you. Make that mindset change and we're going to discuss little things that you do have to do every single day. I can promise you one thing, one thing. I work in the field of medicine, alternative across Japan, Mexico, everywhere. I've been exposed to all the kind of alternative treatments that exist. There is no magic drug. There is no magic pill, plant, oil, snake poison, whatever it is that alone will cure your cancer. I can promise you that. And I'll say the same thing for conventional as well. There is no one method of treatment that will cure your cancer, which is why no one guarantees you. But imagine if we put the best of everything together that makes sense, that works with logic, that works with science, and that works with the miracle of nature and human life. We have a chance to heal. We have a chance to prevent. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.